Hi, my name is Greg Felt, Director of Public Health. Uh, this is the uh, Situation and Epi report for COVID from the 6th of December. Um, game in two halves. First half is Delta. Um, things are broadly flat. Um, case rates are going down in older people, still high in children and young adults, but drifting down um, and drifted, that will drift down slowly for a, a long period. Um, Hospitalisations are also drifting down, clearly that's good news, but let's not forget that the NHS and social care system is under exceptional pressure uh, this time of, for, for this time of year, unusually so. Um, um, mortality rate is drifting down, it's low, but and drifting down, and I think that will continue. It's tough to say where it will go in the medium term. Um, Europe is, is different to the UK. Europe is, is under a lot of pressure, actually, a huge amount of pressure on services. It remains to be seen whether we are um, ahead of the European Delta wave or behind it, and I wouldn't like to call that one way or the other. Second half, Omicron. Um, we'll all have read a lot of stuff in the press on Omicron. It's only a matter of time before it hits Sheffield. Um, the kind of the immediate forward look is that we'll probably see cases in returning travellers and contact tracing of returning travellers. Um, that will then pick up, and it's tough to call when that will pick up, but it will pick up, um, and I suspect it will grow quite quickly. Um, the, it's fair to say the early data is worrying. Uh, those of you that want the detail, I'd encourage you to read the minutes of the SAGE meeting of the, uh, the very start of December, SAGE 97, I think it was. The early data is worrying, there's no two ways about that. There are three concerns, um, transmissibility, severity of, Ill of illness and immune escape, i.e. will, will the, the immunity from vaccination or uh, prior illness uh, protect you? Um, on all three of those things, we genuinely don't know how this will play out in a, a UK population. Uh, we've all seen lots of early intelligence from various parts of Africa and various other parts of the world. Um, it's important that we see that in the context of this country. Um, if I had to call it, there are some signs that there's a slightly less severe but more transmissible illness. Um, in some ways, one could say that's good news. Um, the downside is a, even a less severe illness. If it's more transmissible, there's going to be more cases. So the sheer maths of it will mean there is more um, hospitalisation on the back of a more um, transmissible illness. All that said, massive caveat, we do not know any of this, so we're hanging on to our hats for probably another week or so until we've got good UK science. Um, critical question is immune escape. Um, will the antibodies that came from vaccination or from um, uh, prior illness um, protect us? Um, it's unlikely that there'll be complete immune escape, i.e. there's no benefit from, from existing antibodies, but even if it goes down a little bit, that is a big deal and something that we're watching very, 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 very carefully. Um, it's impossible to know how this will play out. Um, as I say, signs are worrying, um, um, but the fundamentals around controlling COVID still stand. Um, this is a, a version of a COVID virus. So all of the fundamentals around face masks, using lateral flow device testing before you go to uh, high risk high risk events, uh, reducing our contacts with other people a little bit. If we all do a little bit there, then that collectively makes a big difference. Um, if you have symptoms, get a test and stay at home. Um, um, all of that stuff all makes a difference. So if you do go ahead, and have um, uh, Christmas parties, then please, please, please be sensible doing so. The strategy on this is to delay the spread of Omicron and by doing that, maximise the uh, vaccine coverage for both first and, first and second doses for those that haven't had them and critically for boosters. So the strategy is to delay the spread of Omicron. It will spread, there's no two ways about that. The aim is to delay the spread to maximise the time for booster coverage and to get boosters. Um, um, so all up, the vaccine priority is first and second dose. There are still lots of people who haven't had first and second dose. That is the thing that will make most difference. No two ways about that. It is never too late. There is a vaccine waiting for your shoulder if you haven't yet had it. Don't think that the system missed me by, passed me by. Please book and you'll, you, you'll be vaccinated forthwith. Boosters um, have made a huge difference and the overall strategy is to maximise the population level immunity and the individual level immunity by first two doses, then boosters. Um, it's a stunningly effective vaccine that's reached levels of protection that we can gen genuinely only dream of. Um, so even if there is 
a, 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 some loss of the effectiveness of the vaccine against the Omicron strain, um, if it's pretty marginal, it may not make that much difference to an individual. It will make a difference to population, hence the importance of getting high levels of booster. It was announced last week that all adults will be offered boosters, um, and you'll now be offered a booster three months after your second dose, um, or a third dose if you have a weakened immune system. Um, vulnerable people will be contacted first, followed by older age groups, and then working down the age cohorts to younger adults. If you're eligible, you should be able to book a booster jab on the National Booking Service. Um, worth us remembering, it's almost a year to the day that the first COVID vaccination was administered in Sheffield. Uh, uh, there are still tens of thousands of people in Sheffield who haven't yet had their first dose. As I say, if you think the system passed me by, I didn't quite get round to it for whatever reason, it is of no matter, please book and you will be vaccinated. There's no two ways about that and it's never too late. So please book an appointment or hop into one of the many walk-in clinics operating across Sheffield. Um, the, the, the next one is the uh, vaccination clinic at the Interchange, Sheffield Interchange on Wednesday, 1.30 till 5. Um, pop along if you're nearby um, uh, and you will be protected by the time the festive season comes. Lastly, on vaccination of younger people, Reminder that additional clinics for 12 to 15 year olds are available this week. Um, children can pop along without an appointment to one of the drop-in clinics at either Sheffield Children's Outpatient Department tomorrow and the 13th of December or the Sharrow Community Forum on the 15th, uh, sorry, the 9th and the 15th of December, both between 4 and 8 p.m. Bookable slots are released weekly and you can book again on the National Booking Service for uh, the Sheffield and it's a Sheffield Vaccination Centre at Longley. Please be patient and keep trying. Lastly, if you or your child have tested positive for COVID, then you need to wait 12 weeks before you can have your COVID vaccination. And that reflects the changed, uh, changed guidance from the Joint, Commission, Joint Committee on Vaccination from uh, middle, middle of November.